Hi guys, welcome to the Munich High End Show. Let's go. Hi guys, I just arrived at the Munich High End Show and I'm here with Simon from uh, Kisses and he's going to tell me a little bit about uh, his newest products. So, Simon, if you can tell me a little bit about your newest sure, uh, preamplifier, about your yes. uh, okay. Pound. Let me start with the one on the extreme, on this side. This is actually our new coming products. It is probably going to be available after the end of July. It okay. is a streamer. It's a, it's a new streamer devices and then they will be uh, very simple where you can use Bluetooth or you can use the uh, networks to do connections. Then we came to this is the preamp. Okay. This is the, also the newest preamp. It has been launched, actually, it's been showcased in the previously the exponent, but it's only coming here again. And it will officially is going to be completed and launched in end of July. Okay. And this particular preamp has a unique thing. It will be built in with the MC, we are building the MC, and you also it come with the optical cartridges. Okay, in the very future. interesting. Yes, correct. And it's actually priced at a very reasonable price at about three thousand over euros. Yeah, right. Very good mm. price. Yeah. Will you have a matching duck for it uh, in the future, maybe? Uh, yes. Probably for the time being, we, we have not immediately working on that because the deck technology has been moving too fast. Yeah, so yeah, we decided to put, yeah. a, uh, put yes, it back, yes. put a streamers first to connect to the, the third party, and then before we come back with a more uh, stable deck in the price. Because we do have an old deck, which is an S3, which was actually using a stable yes, yes, Pro. Yes. It was a while, but it's, yes. guess what happened? The technology has moved too fast. Yes, so we decided to hold it back. And <laughs> sure. I mean, wait, analog is coming back. You see, everybody's going analog. You yeah. see, you can see in the show, almost everywhere is a, a yeah, assistant tables everywhere. Mm. I see that uh, it has multiple inputs right here, and right? multiple outputs, so mm -hmm. you can connect to multiple sources. Right, so we're providing at least three analog inputs with full okay. XLR and one RCA, and we also provide you to three sets of outputs, one set of XLR, and two sets of RCA. You might be asking me why two sets of RCA? Because we believe that most of the subwoofers they're okay. actually using RCAs. So okay. if you in case you have a you have a power it makes amp sense. It makes that sense. is yeah. using RCA, yeah, then yeah. you have another set to go to the yes. subwoofers. That was the plan. Sounds really great. Thank you. I see that you have uh, several new power conditioners. Massive mm -hmm. power conditioners. Right. And I see that uh, these are isolated power conditioners. Yes. Can you explain a little bit what means? Oh, okay, sure. Isolated? This is one of the uh, um, uh, latest, which is available just like uh, a month ago, a month or two ago. It was known as the, uh, the, the we known as the 800 series. And yes. inside, internally, although it's so small, it's actually compared by two transformers inside there. Okay. Yes, two, two transformers inside there. So with, with one of them providing you a uh, uh, 600, 600 VA yeah. and the other one is the 200 VAs. Okay, the intention of this is that we want to use the 200 VAs to for like isolation or stuff like routers. Yeah. Okay, okay like switch. The so converters, yes, converters, yes, converters, yeah. very low power, Most, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's exactly. within 200. And the other 200, the other 600 is actually more for like a maybe power some uh, integrated a low light yeah. duty amplifiers. Yeah. This was quite popular against. It was quite popular but used for people who are using headphones. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one of them. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> headphone amplifiers, guys, yeah, I have because a lot the of bigger guy yeah. is way yeah. too big. You know what I mean? Yeah. It has a 1,200 watts with, mm. and also the same thing goes, it has two output transformers. One is a 1,200 watts, and the other ah. one is also a 300 watts. But it's just a bit too big for, imagine you are playing a headphones amplification, yeah, which is yeah, not yeah. that big. And so this that. is more than enough. So yeah, this yeah, was yeah. actually used to be known as a BP600. It was just resurfaced again, thanks to because of more people is asking me, hey, you got a big one? Yeah, and yeah. I know we yeah. want a small one. So this was a launch again. What's the price? Uh, was this was actually targeting is about 1,200 euros. It's expensive, but it's not uh, super expensive. I believe that uh, it, yes. it will In go fact, very well. Okay, mm -hmm. to add on to the stuff right now, this is because uh, all, all the technology of all these uh, isolation transformers, they are not only a transformers. We also have these 
so-called the quantum technology. Can you explain what that means? Well, just a little bit. Just yeah, the quantum technology. The quantum technology is actually a kind of a vibration control. What the happens is, is that in the Earth, when because the Earth is moving, due to that, the magnetic field is changing, and it's approximately about seven hertz. Okay. And this is magnetic field is changing. So, in theoretically, is because if any of the component inside there is actually okay. moving, and imagine if what we do is because we put this quantum technology inside the box, so that to make the whole box, all all the components inside there go in the same tandem. Oh. <laughs> that was the purpose of that. Yeah, yeah, and do believe me, uh -huh. when you put you have this technology, you compare the just the isolation versus the quantum, you hear the difference. The sound stage is bigger, and it's actually much more quieter at the background. Mm. I see that uh, this one has a C19 uh, connector. Yes. So uh, it was made for power amplifiers, integrated amplifiers. Right, right. right. Yes. So this is but C19. But it's also isolated. So yes, it's the same. Everything that is found here is here, but it's doubled basically yeah. yes it's because this is actually have a built in 1200 watts two transformer 1200 watt, and the other one was at 300 so, so again two sources and two correct and four uh, yes this guy is good enough to power even like a, like say a, a 120 watts integrated amplifiers or yeah, even a pre-power yeah. of yeah, a smaller yeah. powers mm. i actually have a unit like this uh, at home i am powering a power amplifier my power amplifier uh -huh. and it works uh, yeah it works same. yes Yes. Uh, the noise floor goes up, uh, goes down, and dynamics are going up. Yes. So. In fact, what we are recommending to a lot of customers is concerned is that you see that we, why we created the multiple zone. The purpose yeah. is concerned is that that when you have a transformer which is isolating, you are actually not only isolating the noise. In fact, you are isolating the noise coming up from your own, let's example like a DAC, from yeah. coming out and back to your yes. It, to your 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 yeah, your yes. power amp, yes, which is actually a pure linear device. It so what sense. we recommend yeah. is because yeah. is that keep the zone one for your analog stuff, yeah. keep the yeah. zone two in this case for your digital stuff. Yeah. Because if you go around measuring, you realize concern is that honestly, your own digital stuff make more noise than the incoming. Yes, it makes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. After all, they are digital. Your, your computers, yeah, yeah, yeah. your 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 uh, your. DAC, they're making a lot of noise. Yeah, so do that. You. And that is exactly all our devices becoming multiples of these transformers okay. so that you can actually isolate the group then off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Simon, it Thank was you a pleasure. Very much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for your time. Okay. And, uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, Thank you. Bye. 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 Hi guys, I just arrived at the Gold Note booth and I'm here with Tom, which uh, Hi, will be telling me a little bit about the newest products, which you can see right here. So Tom, if you can tell a little, a little bit more. Sure. About... So this is the new DS1000 Evo, which is a streaming deck with headphone out and it's available in actually two models. One is the DS10 Evo and the other one is called DS10 Evo. DS1000 Evo line. It's got a big one unit, so it's feature-packed, I yes. believe. It has yes. um, it's actually the first time that we experiment with the dual mono duct design. So Okay, so it has two duct chips, yeah? Exactly. We have two ducts, one for the left channel, one of for the right, right channel, channel. So, so we get rid of all the cross through True balanced. Yes, also. exactly. Exactly. And you also have uh, an app that works with this unit? Yes, we have our own app called GN Control that you can use to stream, but also to adjust all the different functions, the volume, the input, um, the, fun the um, headphone sensitivity, or, for example, the um, yeah. Chameleon DAC, which allows you to change the way the DAC behaves. Oh, okay. So you can adjust so... three parameters. Uh, PCM filter, DSD filter, and the, the emphasis. Yeah, yeah, so you can roll off a little bit the treble. Yes, out exactly. Here. You can fine tune it depending on the kind of music you're playing. Okay. Um, and Does then it it's on Room Ready. Room Ready, Tidal Connect, and Spotify Connect. Uh, does it have uh, plenty of power for planar headphones like uh, Rick or Maze yes. Elite or for many yeah. others? 
And the other thing that you can do, which is pretty cool, is that you can adjust the output. So the if, you're playing, yeah, if you're playing oh, something okay. like okay, um, okay. headphones that are quite sensitive, then you can set it on low. If you're playing something that requires a bit more power, you can set it on high, so you get higher gain. So this is basically your newest flagship uh, yes. DA converter, everything all in one, yes. so streaming Correct. all in one. Correct. So and the unit that everybody was waiting for uh, quite yes. some time. Yeah, and the I way you see here is actually so this obviously is a standalone unit. You don't need to have the external power supply or the tube output. But okay. in this configuration, this is what we call the DS1000 Evo Trio, as in it's got three chassis. Oh, okay. and so, so you have power supply. power supply. Yeah, and this okay. is a, a tube output. Buffer. So this is, works like a preamplifier? No, this is just a buffer stage. So basically, you get ah, okay. the preamp that's built in, you get the external power supply, and then the signal goes through valves. And so, so it adds a little bit of warmth, yes, a little exactly, bit of... Uh, exactly, because for the DAC, we use the AKM. And so for some people, that's a bit too crisp or analytical. And when it goes through the valves, it gets softer, you the, rounder, Yeah, yeah plate of uh, yeah. meat on the bone. Yeah, a bit more yeah, velvety, you know? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, yeah. Are there any new products that you can uh, talk about? Now that you mention it, yes, sure. we got this new little guy. This is the IS-10, which is an all-in-one integrated streaming amplifier. So you have preamp, power amp, streamer, DAC, and headphone. So just a single unit, you just need to add some speakers, and that basically it? Correct, yes, well. exactly. <laughs> and the other thing that you can do is you also have two analog inputs. Oh, okay. so you can, so you can add a sound table, for example. Exactly, or maybe exactly. Else. And you have a USB host. Yes, this is for uh, USB hard drives. So if you have oh, okay. a USB key, so you can have you them, up with uh, music. offline music. Uh, yes, exactly. Library, for example. Yeah, and it supports up to DSD two fifty six and PCM seven sixty eight. So basically, all the newest uh, Pretty formats. Much. So Pretty much. Okay. And it's a ninety watt rating on eight. So plenty of power. You can drive power. in yes. stand for loudspeakers easily. The other thing that you can do is you can connect a power amplifier to it. So this is the IS-10. You can connect the PA-10 EVO to oh, it. Okay. And then it runs as a monoblock. And it goes okay. up to 140 watts per channel. As a monoblock? As a monoblock. Wow, that's a very cool idea, actually. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty unique. How, how much is this? This is going to retail for less than 3,000. Probably 1,800, 1,900 euros, something okay. like that. And yeah. this one? And this one, this is the premium model, so it's the, it's the flagship model, one. yeah, and that's 8,500. Okay. And then we have the DS1000 EVO without the line inputs, and that's 6,500. Okay. Thank you. That's Thank you, Sandra. It's been great. Thank you for everything, and I'll see you next at the next booth. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
into so it's eight ohms. For oh, most, oh, very much so. But also, yeah. it has a lot of slam as well. The, oh, the, desi like the, the, the design of the power supplies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Switching it, more power supply, but still. Yeah. It's well, a there, there are actually yeah. there, there are four, uh, actually five, um, high frequency power supplies in in, okay. in this. Uh, but all very high high density uh, really yeah, units. Product. Yes, I hope it will uh, succeed. Oh, I'm I'm sure it is. Well, it's already. How much it is? Uh, it's a it's just over eight thousand pounds. Eight thousand pounds. Okay. Um, uh, but I mean, for the performance, you know, this is a pretty good yeah, cord, um, uh, full range entry level product. And it's part from the Ultima line. Sorry? Uh, it's part from the Ultima Oh, very line. much so. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Really nice. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, this one? I, I really can do, yes, yes. I don't no. know what it is, but you okay. can explain it. Okay, this, this product, this product um, is... Very compact. The re yes, it, it's the replacement, and very solid as well. Uh, it is the replacement for um, our previous amplifier, Toby, which didn't have... Uh, it, although it's a very good amplifier, it didn't have the latest Ultima technology uh, topology yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that we have within our, all of our products now. So we've, we've brought this one up to date, we've added a few nice features. Also, um, uh, one of the other features um, is the switching arrangement. Uh, uh, it's to comply with the very latest uh, standards around the world. So uh, yeah. it's a very high tech product in a very dense package. Can you I can see. Hold it a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's very heavy. Oh, very Indeed. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of technology inside. Oh, okay. So it's on, uh, you can use it anywhere on the globe. Oh, oh yeah, anywhere. Yes, yeah, yes. That's great. Yeah, yeah. The XLR inputs and RCAs. Yeah. How much power? Uh, this one, it must be around uh, about 75 watts into eight. 75. It'll, it'll double into four. And the price point for this uh, one? I think it's around four, just over 4,000, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Yeah. It's a good pr price point for the performance. I'll just pop that back. Okay. Thank you, John, for everything. Thank and you. I'll see you on the next book. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi guys, I just arrived at the Shining booth. I'm here with Frankie. Hello. And uh, he's telling me uh, that they have some new products which I'm uh, really uh, eager to know about. So, can you tell me a little bit more about the newest uh, diesel audio uh, player? Definitely. So, our latest release that was public, made publicly is our M9 Plus. Yeah, okay. It's our new flagship player, kind of follow up to the original M9 with the same basic structure, the same system, the same CPU, about the same size but okay. completely new audio circuit inside based on the latest AKM new flagship, uh, AK4499EX. So you have four of them? We have four DACs inside okay. because this is following on our design that we used in the EM7 and M6 Ultra where we have like each deck uh, taking care of each channel. Each, its own channel in, in fully balanced. Yeah, so so, so four you, channel, we have four, four channels yeah. for DACs. And the uh, amplifier is the same? It's working? Uh, the amplifier is uh, adjusted for it. Uh, it is okay. running on the JFET. And ah, it, is, really nice. uh, it is a bit improved from the original M9. Because okay. we are using different ACs, so the, we adjusted JFET, it for it. So this is basically a truly discrete at uh, the yes. first stage? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, would, we could argue over, the, over like the, this terminology. Yeah, for yeah, us, like, you, you can find the full specification on our website. Yeah, yeah, the main yeah. thing is that uh, compared to old M9, this one is using mo uh, more JFET based amplifier. But uh, I'm sure it will slam pretty hard. Yes, like uh, what I'm getting, people uh, people like M9s because they can run even like the HD 600s with them. And like they seem to be happy with it, so that's good. Uh, yeah, the M9 Plus that started shipping this month. So okay, so you, it's you ready for sale. Can, it's already on the sale. It is uh, about 3,000 USD, 3,000 Euro. It's a high end. So. Yes. Uh, well, for us, it is. we were kind of happy that we were able to keep the price kind of close to the original M9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we were kind of, at the beginning, we were afraid that, oh, we are putting four AKM decks and like how much will it push the price. Yeah, Luckily, yeah, yeah. it is kind of 2,800 was the original M9. Now we are 2,000. So slightly jump, yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. there are other DAPs that are even more expensive. So sounds yeah. really cool. Yeah. What's this one? Uh, this is our new uh, H5. Okay, uh, so it's it, basically a smaller H7. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a few things. Like, yes, firstly, when you take it next to the H7, 
it is a little bit shorter. Okay. Uh, but we have the same inputs. We have the same uh, features, the same system. So you can still use the Bluetooth input, the micro SD card playback. Micro SD card. Uh, okay, so you can use it basically as a player. With, yes. But you need a smartphone. Yes. Yeah, you can. You it. can use it completely standalone if you have your uh, micro SD card set up for it. Of course, you can connect it to your phone and use our APP to control the the playback, browse through everything. Uh, but the main thing about H5, firstly. The amplifier circuit is kind of simplified and we have yeah, less yeah. power than H7. Obviously, yeah. And the deck section is kind of similar to the M6 Ultra. And M6 Ultra for us was I like... I love that one. I love that one. Very yes. natural. Very uh, M6 organic. Ultra is our best selling one because people... Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Because M6 Ultra managed to capture the Schelling House sound. Yeah, it's very uh, nice, warm, smooth. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. the H5 is taking on lots of that from, from, uh, from that sound. So uh, the H7 is better. It is more. Uh, it has more kick. It is more detailed. More detailed. Uh, overall, overall, overall. overall better. But the H5 yeah. is kind of different. Quite different step in the tuning from the yeah. H7. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you want something yeah. more warmer, smoother, the H5 is better choice. So and also the H5 will be about half price from the H7. Half the price. Oh, so that's yeah. a big. That's a big surprise. Okay. Yeah. And so we were now showing it to on some shows and meetings in Japan. And in Japan, H7 is a big seller. Wow. And the people also love the H5. So we have big hopes okay. for the H5. And that one will be coming June, July, okay. somewhere over the summer. Maybe I can have a look at it. That's all right. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we'll get some uh, samples soon. Sure, for for sure, now, sure. we still have kind of. Okay. Can you tell us what is this beauty right here? It's okay, much so bigger, this, much heavier. This is Onyx Project Miracle. Okay. Uh, Onyx is sort of our sister brand. Uh, we, we work with them, uh, they, they serve as actually our consultants on lots of our own products and Onyx is kind of run by them as a little bit more high-end brand than, than most of the Shining, Shining yeah. products yeah, yeah, yeah. and so the, on Project Miracle is our mo latest, most direct uh, cooperation and uh, it is made by Shining, uh, but by the tuning from the Onyx guys okay. and the Shining is the one in charge of intentional distribution and the main point of this uh, Onyx, we call it Miracle Stack because all the three parts are included and comes together. So in the middle, we have Deck Amp. Okay. It is based on the ESS ES69, the, the newest flagship from yeah, ESS. The one with uh, MQA? Uh, no, the one oh, without. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, the version uh, without MQA. Yeah? Uh, yeah, this is special power supply because it's unique that you can change the voltage of the power supply. Okay, so and this is with, that, with that, you can change from 12 volts to 24 volts and completely affecting the, both the DAC and the amplifier behavior. And we made this uh, because it allows for kind of hardware level adjustments for yeah, different yeah. headphones. So in our experience, if you are running something easy to drive, like these uh, ultrasounds with small dynamic drivers, you, you want lower voltage. We are running it on the lower voltage, around yeah, yeah, 12, yeah. 13 volts, yeah, and yeah. at that time point, we're getting our really the Shenling House sound, yeah. where it's warm, smooth. Mm -hmm. But if you want to put it some other dynamics, like here we have the moon drops, you put it to 20, 24 volts, you get much bigger power swings. You get yeah. more kicks, more energy. Much better it, prices, it's, yeah. It's get a little bit, maybe a little bit more, less, uh, well, a little bit more harsh than we would like, yeah, but yeah. it simply allows you to adjust it. You can adjust it by the, by uh, voltage, or from like the full, full, st full steps, 12, 14, 16, but you can also yeah. do like micro adjustments by 0 0.1 volt, if you really want to play with it. <laughs> uh, it is just okay. something uh, our, our head engineer likes this idea, and so we try to put it in. And it seems so far working very nicely. I see that it has three displays. One here, one here, yeah, one here. Yeah, so pretty much here we have a small display yeah. with a wheel control for adjusting yeah. the voltage. Here we have, uh, because on the top, on the DAC itself, we are using the Ingenic 2000 pl platform. Oh, okay. So that gives us uh, access to a few more uh, functions on the deck itself. So we oh. have ex access to different settings, uh, all in the menu, menu itself. It's everything from like wow, uh, wow, screen, screen, screen settings, nice. playback settings. It's, it's but basically like a very small uh, smart screen. Uh, yes, uh, it, it is tiny screen. I, okay. I'm not sure what this screen is from. But it looks but good. It, and you can even use it without the streamer. You can of course use it as a normal... Wait, wait a minute, so you can take you it, can take it out? Wow. Yeah. Before we get to this one, I will just finish about the, the, okay. the deck part. 
So of course it has like the standard digital inputs, but you can also use it with USB drive, and oh. you can put you can put in the USB stick. So as a music server in a way. Uh, kind of, and yeah. you can use the screen to navigate through the music. So even you can, it can work as a standalone if you okay, simply have without that, that without, part. Without, without the streamer. Yeah. And just by putting the USB drive, and you can use the screen to play around. But yeah, then we have the, the hold XM10. It? Definitely, it looks like a smartphone. Yeah, because we, <laughs> uh, for this one, we wow. have changed the ap approach. You know, because normally for our DAPs, we try to make them, they, they end up most of the time a bit thicker, because we try to make the battery as big as possible. For this one, we are, because this device can work as a DAP, but its main purpose is as the streamer for the Onyx. Yeah. Much better. It's much better. Really? It's, it's really, really, if you look at it, it's, it looks and feels like phone, about the, the same yeah, size, yeah, the, same the same thickness. Phone, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the idea for this, uh, for, for the mobile section, we call it XM10, is that it has kind of simplified audio circuit on the same level as our U83. Yeah, yeah. And the idea is that you will listen to it on the way to your office. Uh, we have 3.5 output that's the same combined as on the M M0 Pro. So you can use oh, it okay. with an adapter and use it fully balanced. Okay, okay. And so you will listen to it on the public transport. You have all your apps. And when you come to the office, very cool process. You just open it up, you put it in. Very cool. And you have streamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is not just, uh, it's different from, like you can connect your Android phone to any DAC and kind of use it as a transport. But for this one, because it is built to work with this, with, with a DAC. Actually, the part of the clocking is already done on the mobile section. Okay. So, it, so the USB connection is more stable with less jitter than you would, you would have with normal phone. Makes so sense. We, yeah. In our testing, and what we believe is that this combination will give you better sound than if you were connecting your normal phone. And it is open Android system. It's the same. It's the same system as we are using on our M9 Plus. So, yeah, yeah, so Snapdragon, yeah. Snapdragon CPU, six six inch screen, access to all the apps, all the streaming services. And when I buy this, I buy basically all three devices? Yes, uh, for, for, for now we're selling it only as a one bundle together. Okay, as a start. Okay. Uh, How much it is? Uh, together it is 5,000 euro. So it's uh, it high. Is, it, it, it is high <laughs> end, uh, but we are talking, we are here on the high end Munich. Even at 5,000 sure. euro, we are one of the cheaper devices. I can understand high end and devices. <laughs> yeah. it is, it's really designed as a high end, all in one rig for your headphones. You just put it on your desk. You do not need a computer. You do not need even like other DAP because you have Nothing the DAP. Really yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. in one. And go, compared to other streamers, even to, compared to our streamers, uh, the full Android gives you access to all the streaming services, all the APPs. Yes. If you like USB audio player pro, or you like the Onkyo music player, whatever, yeah, you can yeah. install it in, you have access to Play Store, and it will all work with the, with the stack. Uh, will this one be sold by Shining as well, or? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, internationally, it will be sold by our normal Shining distributors. Oh, okay. Uh, only in China and uh, Taiwan, it will be sold directly by the Onyx. For international markets, you can find it at the Shining distributors. Thank you very much for everything. Thanks, Frankie, and I'll see you at the next book. Bye. Hi guys, I just arrived at the Erzetich booth. I'm here with my buddy, Blas. Blas, are you my buddy? Blas. <laughs> Blas, Blas, okay, Blas. <laughs> okay. Blas, are you my yeah. buddy? Yeah. Okay, and uh, we're going to check uh, the new amplifiers. Are yeah. these new amplifiers? Um, Deimos has been around since 2014, but this is its uh, fourth iteration. It's uh, okay. brand new, so and it's... it was made in a different design to match uh, Sila, our uh, new amplifier. Okay. Uh, Scylla is based on Deimos, but this is a fully balanced amplifier with better electronic components, a strong uh, so uh, power supply, and yes, yeah, yeah. it's uh, high-end with a step into ultra high-end. Which one has a better slam? <laughs> better this dynamics. One. Uh, Seriously, this one? No, this one is <laughs> if you want a slam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one combined with Charybdis, 
it's so even, it's so natural that actually disappears. Only music remains. And okay, that, so we'll uh, finish this video and I will have a long listen okay. to this one because yeah. uh, you made me very curious about this one. Okay. And uh, the price point of these two amplifiers? Amplifier uh, Deimos 4000 euros and uh, Sila 6000 euros. Okay, okay. Uh, so definitely higher material in a way. Yes. 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 So uh, this one was made uh, mostly for these headphones, yeah, but you be can because uh, Sila and Charybdis have been in mythology mother and daughter. Yeah. yeah and okay. Phobos and Deimos were brothers, so ah, that, okay. that's why uh, the combos were ah, meant uh, since, since the beginning. I'm more into Norse yeah. mythology, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I can understand Greek as yeah. well. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Blas, for uh, Blas, for everything. Yeah. It's uh, nice you. to know you finally and to see you. Same to you. I'll see you at the next booth. Thanks, it's been great. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Hi guys, I'm here at the Callisto booth with uh, Pierre and he'll... Hi Pierre. And he's you? going to tell us a little bit more about the new high-end headphone amplifier which is mm -hmm. called Amethyst from uh, Callisto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Can you tell us more about it? Sure, so it's a premiere. We are launching Amethyst here at the uh, Munich exhibition, the Amy Munich Audio Show. It's, uh, as you can see, a two box, two units two boxes. for yeah, the yeah, set. Yeah. So there is an external supply here. This is which the power is, supply? Yeah, okay. this is the power supply, which is um, uh, with uh, rectifiers, oh. tube, uh, and this uh, amplification unit is hybrid. So, okay, so it's a hybrid yeah. headphone amplifier. Yeah, you yeah, have it is. tubes at the input stage yeah. and transistors and solid the state. stage. Yeah. How much power does this baby uh, oh, provide? So today I can say that it delivers 15 watts RMS at 8 ohms. So plenty of power to drive pretty yes. much anything out there? It, it will probably evolve. We may have a, a bunch of watts in addition. <laughs> Bunch of watts. Okay, yeah, I love a bunch, I love of, a bunch watts. of watts. Okay. Uh, to, to, to give it a, a total drive for anything in the planet, as as long as it is electrodynamic or planar and, magnetic. Okay, and uh, since it's a hybrid amplifier, I believe it has a very good dynamics and very good transients. Yeah, it should exactly. slam like a yeah, really hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds uh, like a really amazing idea. Uh, does it have some additional features, or is just a headphone amplifier? So it's an integrated headphone amplifier. Okay. Uh, it's also a pre-amplifier because Calist is uh, firstly uh, uh, a specialist in high-end amplification. Oh, okay. So two years ago, we decided to do a the first well. yeah, so uh, uh, headphone amplifier. Well. So it can do both. Okay. Headphones driving and... Uh, and so you, you can yeah. basically add some monoblocks from Calist, for yeah, example. Sure. Yeah, sure. From Calist or any other brand, no problem. Any other brand. Um, okay. And... Uh, what I can tell is that, well, it, it does initiate a new range at Calist, which, okay, is the so ultimate, is uh, the, which is the ultimate range in electronics. So it's the first uh, offer, which the is ultimate dedicated. Range, so yeah. it, it sounds like uh, quite expensive. Yeah, it is. How much? How much it is? <laughs> uh, 16,000 euro. 16,000. Yeah. Okay, it's a lot, but uh, it should be super high end. Maybe I can test it someday. Yeah. We'll see about that. My pleasure. Yeah. Sounds sure. like a sounds like a plan already. Yeah, it, yeah? it is a plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pierre, okay. for everything. My pleasure. And I'll Good see, to you see you at the next booth. Okay. <laughs>Hi guys, I just arrived at the Odyssey booth. With, I'm here with Chris. Hi Chris, nice to meet you Sandu, great finally. To meet you. And uh, I want to know more about your newest uh, headphones, if you can talk about that. Yeah, that would be great. Since this show last year, we have three new models that we've come out with. Um, first was the MM500, okay. which is a, a pro mixing headphone that we designed with uh, Manny Merking. Yeah. Um, so this was our attempt to capture his flavor of what he mixes with in the studio, okay. so we can take him out on the road and then mix yeah, and yeah, come yeah. back and it'll translate. It's very light. Yeah, it's this very, is one of our lighter headphones. We, we used the LCD-5 
which came out a couple of years ago, um, yeah, yeah. and just sort of made it more bulletproof and more studio friendly. So it's easier to drive in a way. Yeah, very easy to drive. You can um, plug it into anything. Okay, that's a really good idea. And it's um, more linear in a way, sounds or. Yeah, it, it, it hits more of that, a little bit uh, presence range thing that a lot of mix engineers like, so it brings out the vocals and reverb ah, tails and details ah, that so they can hear. So it's slightly better than mid range in a way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds so, like a really interesting headphone. Yeah. How much it is? It's in Europe. It's twenty one ninety nine. Okay. And US? In US, sixteen ninety nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I need to move to states. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, that, that's we have to add fat and all that, you know, import duties. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Like okay. Yes. <laughs> so then we came out with the Maxwell, uh, okay. which is our gaming headset, latest gaming headset. Uh, ho totally new design. It's a wireless headset. It has a USB dongle. It has Bluetooth. It also has a wired USB and analog. And it has a, a noise reduction in the microphone that can take out pretty much all the background noise. Wow, wow. It uses the same mic technology that our filter speakerphone uses okay. um, to just remove every sound except the human voice. Okay. Really cool idea. Really cool. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And that goes for inside. $299 for the PlayStation version in the US. Yeah, so. Uh, so it's, I think, $399 here in Europe. Okay, so two, uh, two versions available. Yeah, yeah there's so also the, uh, the, Xbox? the Xbox version, yeah. okay, okay. which has an Xbox license and a Dolby license built in. And it works with Windows as well? Yep. Uh -huh. Windows, yeah, and so it'll do Atmos on Windows as okay. well as okay. Okay. everything else. Okay. And the last one? Last one is the, the newest baby in the bunch, the okay. MM100, which is sort of the scaled down version of the MM500. So made for bedroom producers, people on a budget. Much lighter. Yeah, in a way. It's, it's definitely a, a very portable headphone. And we use the headband from the Maxwell. Oh, I see that. And yeah, so yeah. We're, we're able to kind of use economy of scale to make things yeah, less yeah. costly. It, it makes sense. Yeah, so these are 399 in the 399. States, oh, okay. 494 here in Germany. So it's more like a successor to the LCD one, the old one, LCD yes. one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of our re envisioning of LCD one. Uh, but uh, it we looks took out all higher the plastic, in a way. so yeah. everything's metal. Very few moving parts. Okay. The headband adjustment is by uh, holes like a belt or a, a watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you have fewer moving parts, makes yeah. it easier to build and easier fewer to things service. to go wrong. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And another cool thing is the cable can plug uh. into either side. Oh, okay. You only need to plug it into one side, but it doesn't matter which one, the stereo will be the same. So you have a cable running right yes. here, yeah? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. Very cool products, very, very cool headphones. All right. Thank you, Chris, for Thank everything. You. Yeah. And uh, I'll see you at the next book. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> you are amazing. <laughs> <laughs>Hi guys, I just arrived at the Mesa Audio booth. I'm here with Antonio. Hello. Hi Antonio, it's finally nice, nice to, to meet you in person. Every time. Yeah, yeah. I must say you have the best booth, uh, headphone listening booth that uh, you can find in Munich. So thank you. That's thank really you. great. Uh, it's a really important <laughs> show for us every year um, and we like to, to really put our effort into it. I can so, see that. And, and we see each other here every year, yeah, yeah, which is exactly. really nice. It's yeah. a little bit like a reunion. And uh, every year we try That's to true. make uh, the environment here for, for listening and experiencing uh, our headphones with all these beautiful uh, Basically, 80% of all the stacks that I want to listen at the Munich show, I yeah, can listen yeah. right here. You have the Felix, you have I the Rock now. I think we have 16 different uh, stations for listening. Each, each is a different setup. And pretty much the best amplifiers, you know, the best the yeah. converters, uh, with some of the best headphones. So yeah, what's beautiful yes, about uh, this uh, environment here, the Munich community, the Munich show brings together the hi-fi community. And because these are the, the companies and the people that we literally meet uh, every time we go to a trade show, every year in Munich or other shows, uh, there is a relationship between the, the people and the companies and we literally work together. Uh, so you will see uh, our products on other people's uh, 
racks. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see and, that. and we use there. So, so it's obviously uh, you know all the complementary brands work together. So everyone from uh, Cord or uh, Felix Audio. So it's or, teamwork mostly. With yeah, them. yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's really um, helping each other to create yeah, the yeah. the right experience for the customers. Yeah. I saw that Gold Note, Ferrum, and many others are using Meza headphones. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I see them I, basically. Actually, everywhere. I just walked around the the trade show. Two, two hours ago, and I was surprised in how many places we have our headphones. So, so my, my team yeah. did a really good job at uh, <laughs> agree with that. Yeah, making yeah. Uh, exchanges product. I'm product using exchange. them daily, the elites. So okay. those are basically my go-to headphones. So those are very balanced in a way. So I see why. Thank you. People are using uh, the Maze yeah. Elite everywhere. So, so now that you mentioned Elite, uh, <coughs> we have a new version of the Elite. Okay. It's called the Tungsten. Okay. Uh, in uh, essence the headphone is the same it's a it's a color scheme but color it comes scheme. with a new ear pad okay. and it's a very special ear pad it's the new uh angled ear pad angled it's ear our pad, first so angle ear pad for, uh, for the better uh, basically better derivativity of the waveguides in a way and so in general uh, it, it works better for i mean i think it's uh, some people like other versions of our ear pads but i think this one is in my opinion, our top earpad, which works both for Empyrean and Elite, but it comes with the Elite. And uh, yeah, I mean, we just launched it, but I actually have it. So I have far. it for about a month. I oh, have you have the, it. Okay. I have the engineering sample. So, so that's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have great. it for, so for some what, time. what do you think? Okay, I'm it's, interviewing uh, you. How do you <laughs> find the new angled earpad? Um, I'm not going to sell it, okay? Uh, <laughs> you, you tell me. The sound is bigger, definitely. So okay. the sound stage is better. There's slightly better separation of the notes. Right. Uh, not very tight in a way, okay. but uh, more relaxed sounding and uh, easier to listen to in a way. Okay. Better and depth at the same time. Okay. Very easy to like. Okay. And very comfortable, mm -hmm. especially in the summertime. You know, uh, I'm sweating. Yeah, maybe the sometimes, but the, those nice. are working much better. So. Okay. Very so good job with the ear pads. So, of course, uh, let me ask you in a <laughs> in a interesting way i'll okay. ask you like are they actually better just simply put um, because it's my product but i'm going to ask you to tell me okay, is it actually I'll, I'll better be, than the I'll previous be, earpads i'll be honest with you yeah uh, go ahead that <laughs> i like the leather pads a little okay. bit more because uh, i'm more into rock music okay. know, electronic music all the modern stuff so i like the kick yeah i like the transit response yes. and for me leather are providing me yeah, it just more a, of that a little impact. bit more yeah yeah but the one when i want to listen to some jazz to you know mm -hmm. Blues music and I listen to a lot of stuff as well, so those are working okay. better. Those are definitely better. So I'm swapping them. Okay. Okay. And it's very easy to swap. So you have basically the best, uh, you know, the easiest way to swap ear pads, and uh, it's like having two pairs of headphones in a way mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. those two ear pads. Yeah. Basically, so, uh, what we realize yeah. is that um, we the the driver in the Imperial and Elite, uh, the two drivers, they have a lot of potential. But um, we did. I don't think we managed to fully unlock the whole potential from the beginning, and uh, we have, have uh, in house a lot of trials of uh, you know we literally build earpad prototypes of all shapes and sizes and with different foam inside and yeah, different yeah. Uh, type of holes in the yeah, yeah, yeah. exterior, interior, and so forth. Exactly. So uh, we we found uh, you know after a lot of trials this this uh, solution as being kind of what everyone in average was asking for okay because so we you know there's a preferable preference your mine you know and somebody else's but over three years or four since the Empyrean is out and then the last year since the elite is out we we have a lot of um, we gather a lot of feedback from distributors dealers and and customers and so we tried to engineer a earpad which addresses most of their needs yeah and yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. that's this angled ear pad and uh, we got the seal of approval from some well, you know certain people yeah, yeah. and it, we think in general is it's, it's what most people want but then again there's always people who have different preferences of course of course so that's why uh, hi-fi exists <laughs> <laughs> agree uh, I can sense that it works better with our file proof music. Yeah, uh, it yeah. uh, in a way uh, shows uh, the driver what it's, ca it's mm -hmm. capable of. So I can see the beauty of that earpad, and I can understand it. So. Yeah, even if I listen to uh, ear, uh, leather earpad a little mm. bit more. Uh, are there new products in the pipeline? Oh yes, uh, a, lot, a lot, a lot, a <laughs> lot. So um, 
we you don't need to be super specific, but no, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so we didn't uh, this year. We didn't launch any completely new product, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's because May. we're just working on a lot of projects. We have in total 15 projects. 15. 15 possible okay, projects, okay. but we're not working on all of them. Okay. We worked on each project at different times. Uh, we pushed forward sometimes one, sometimes the other, but we have some priority projects which we're gonna release towards the end of this year. And I think many people will be very happy because it's uh, performance and there's also uh, some affordability factor in it. Uh, and uh, yeah, the plan is to make maybe two products every new year, every year, two like new products, like yeah, special yeah, editions. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is that um, at this point, our I think our, our R&D team is, uh, has grown tremendously, but we're also a bit overwhelmed by the number of possibilities that we have. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're just uh, getting... Uh, started. <laughs> we're just getting started and we're working really hard on um, managing ourselves and our own resources because in the past we did one project at a time because literally there was no way we could try more. There was yeah, no resources, no time, yeah. no money, no people. But now we have a bit more, but we also a lot more, uh, we have a lot more ideas, let's say, because the more you learn, the more ideas come up and then the more you realize you don't know things, of course. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the level at which our team is now, it's not comparable at all with what was two years ago or uh, seven years ago. When we launched the 99 Classics, we were a very young team. Uh, very inexperienced compared to now and also when we launched Imperium still it's a big difference so in all this knowledge and experience we gained in these last years is now being slowly cooked into this new project so very happy about that and yeah can't I'm, wait to, I'm to really see excited them and to, too. to hear them as well yeah um, so looking forward to them it's yeah. just a question of time all these projects are viable but we will not be able to make all of them yeah but yeah. we'll make <laughs> most of them, half of them every year as much as we can. And yeah, I mean, the thing I'm really proud of, it's not really visible on the outside, is that internally the team really grew and uh, our capacity, our, um, our uh, diversity internally, it's, it's really amazing um, to, to just be in this team. It's like, I can't really believe it that we have this in Bayamara actually, to yeah, be honest. Yes, yes. I, I remember when I graduated industrial design, long time ago and uh, there was literally no place I could work you know even yeah, if yeah, yeah. I would do back then even interior design or furniture design was not available now uh, we have a not only an industrial design studio in Bayamare in Romania but it's even a studio that actually takes products all the way to manufacturing and and that's kind of a dream come true <laughs> to be honest to, to be able to control the projects from concept, design, engineering, engineering for manufacturing and all the acoustic development and testing meanwhile, and then actually uh, assembling it. Some parts we manufacture, most parts we uh, outsource yeah, yeah, the yeah, components yeah. themselves, but then we assemble in Romania. All the products except 99 Classics and Neo we assemble in Bayamare actually. And then to do the QC and then the logistics and then the marketing and then the sales and the customer feedback and the customer support. So this whole chain is like amazing. It's, it's amazing to be in it and to see so much. Because from every uh, of these stages, you learn so much about how, how you can improve the product, the service and, and to understand better what the people actually need. Yeah. Well, so. well, congrats for living the dream and for making it a yeah, it's bigger a really one every good year. Time. It's a really good time right now. So <laughs> Thanks for everything. And thank you very much for, for coming. For the interview and I'll see you next year. Yeah, thank you. And I'll see you at the next booth. Bye. Bye. Hi guys, I just arrived at the Ferrum Audi booth and I'm here with Martin. Camerla. Hi Martin. Nice to Hi, Sando. Uh, once again meet you. Uh, I see that you have a new product here, a new DA converter. How it's called? 
It's called the converter. <laughs> yeah, it's called the converter. You know, um, we like playing with words. Okay, so basically, um, when we were designing this thing, uh, our idea, and it, it was to be a clear converter, something which was uh, designed around, around, uh, revolving around this particular function about the conversion, and that's why we had this idea to call it converter. That's very simple. But we use uh, one thing, you know. We use the words for uh, various European languages. So, for the moment, we use from Greek, uh, Dutch, uh, German, um, uh, uh, Esperanto, and German. So this is German. That's German. Okay. But but we want you know to use um, also the words from other languages. And I need you know, and I have a temptation to use the word from the um, from the Slovak language. Okay. Uh, that um, that this that, name is Hrza. <laughs> That would be a terrible product. Please don't use that name. No, no, I want to do it. I, I, I need to do it. So nobody will be able to pronounce it. I mean, you know, we in Eastern Europe will be able to do it, but... Martin, uh, I have a difficult question for you. Yeah. But you need to be very honest about it. How many beers did you have before you decided naming your converter, the converter? Uh, no, no beers, only wine. Okay, that's... that's no, no. That was you know, we. I was perfect. talking to my friend from Germany. Um, uh, I was talking to my German friend, and you know, it was like uh, when we were talking. I was thinking, why? That, that's a, uh, and when, when I thought, ah, that's a wild idea. Let's do. Let's use this name. <laughs> Very good choice, I would say. Uh, could you show us maybe some features, or maybe you can talk about what it does, what this really is? It's just a DA converter, or a little bit more? There are, two, there are two tendencies in audio um, uh, design. I mean, you know, some um, some products are like uh, Swiss knives, so they offer every um, feature uh, the user can use, and sure. we tend to the other. We tend to the to make the products which are very simple in functions, but at the same time they do the single function very very well. So basically, we decided, you know, to make this converter um, doing only. Go, uh, conversion, but the conversion in a very, very good way. So that's why there's no headphone amplifier, there's no um, phono, um, uh, phono input, nothing like that. So nothing, uh, we, we, ha we decided not to put uh, inside anything which would consume the budget and it, w and it uh, w what would mean that it it would harm, in fact, the sound quality because you know if we if we, yeah. if we, if we make the product which is three thousand or something like that, two thousand eight hundred. So you have to calculate the price. Okay. So if you decide to add additional hardware, it will cost the money. That means you know that you that you can't um, do the uh, main function properly because you spend you have you spend the money on other on other features needed by some people. Okay. But in the same time, that's that's a, um, from this per perspective, there's a very simple unit doing only one thing, but it's in reversal at the same time because we decided, you know, to uh, this unit to be a heart of the living room system. So basically, there are all the all the connectors you need. It means um, it means the uh, HDMI, SPD, TOSLink, ASCBO, uh, I Square S, and of course USB. USB, which is pretty um, uh, pretty very important uh, these days. Yeah. So you can use it. So it's simple and universal in the same time. I see that uh, you have just here a hip, uh, Hipsus power supply, so you can power it with Hipsus, and it yes. will sound a little bit better. I would say this way: the unit is very good. Um, Already with the um, with the with the with the power supply which we um, which we put into the box. This is a, this is a standard power S S M P S. You know, for me it's you know it's enough. But if you you know if you are a real connoisseur, if you are, you want to do make this uh, last step, you know, to the perfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would recommend getting Hipsos, but again, if you are, uh, if you, if you, if you just want a very good converter, um, uh, Vandla with standard SMPS, that's that's what you want. Will Hipsos work with Vandla and with War at the same time? Once again, uh, will Hipsos work with Vandla and uh, Or at the same time? Yes, it can be. I mean, you know, the power, the power output is uh, big enough of Hipsos 
to, to power both of them, there is only one, um, one thing which won't be uh, available. That's, um, um, that's this, this uh, feedback. Uh, that's uh, 40 cents in. So basically, you cannot do this because it's point to point. It, uh, and when, when, you, you, when you make a Y connection, it's not possible. Oh, this it's a touch screen. <laughs> yes, okay. you, you can touch this, okay, but you okay. can touch this one. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> all is fine, all is fine. Nothing, nothing is broken. <laughs> Yeah, that's a touch screen. So that's, that's okay. our first unit okay. with touch screen. And, and you know, this, this um, uh, I have to praise our engineering team. They, they really know what they do. So basically, the touch screen is very, very nice. Uh, it works perfectly. Um, uh, and, and it's very, um, it, it looks very, very uh, classy. So I'm, I'm proud of, of our team. I see analog out, right? Analog out, analog yes. out, and analog in. Yes, so, so there's, yeah, so... And all green, so you can work as a preamp, in a way. Uh, basically, you can, you have two ways of, you know, of, of um, processing the analog input in such a box. One is, uh, you convert this to, uh, uh, you put the ADC inside, and then it goes, you know, to the, uh, to the, to the routing section, and then it goes to the, to the DAC, where you make the um, attenuation, okay? We decided to do it a clear way, I mean, in full analog. So there's a, um, um, there's a analog volume control circuit, um, um, fully balanced, very cleverly done. So that so uh, and you can use this uh, so you can use the circuit also for the digital signal. So you you have the option to use digital and um, and and uh, an analog volume control. Of course, for analog uh, input, you can use only the the analog volume control. But what we found that because you know this um, um, this analog volume control circuit was improved by us during the development time, sure. and what we, what we what we are pretty convinced right now it's much better than the digital one so uh, i yeah, will, you yeah, know when, when you got it's you not know, something new yeah yeah I'm but, but it, it's it's tricky you know it's very yeah. tricky it, it depends upon the conditions for someone's doing uh, hybrid yeah yeah control, so for example yeah. when you do um, when, when the, the the power the output level is pretty high digital output the volume control is pretty okay but it but when when the the the, the sound is pretty um, pretty low then um, the resolution, you know, uh, the, the, there are problems with the resolution. Channel imbalance, resolution, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it, but mostly with the resolution. But with analog volume control, it can be cleaner, but at the same time, it adds noise. Or, you know, it can be... Uh, there are another, other problems with digital. But, I, yeah. but again, our engineering team, you know, did their best. And I would... Uh, anybody who will be use, using, um, who will be using Vandla, we can, with uh, clearly hard, we can, with, with whole heart, we can recommend using the, uh, the analog volume control over digital one. That's better. Okay. So this is basically the best body for uh, OR and HIPSOS at the same time. Yeah. So making a freeway stack, uh, you know, for headphone listening. Yeah, yeah. And but then, of course, you can use it with loudspeakers as well, with uh, stereo setups. Yes. We, uh, we have, you know, we were thinking about two scenarios, okay? So why there's no, um, uh, there are, because there are, there are more reasons why there's no headphone output on this box. One is this, uh, one was, uh, one I mentioned already, because we wanted to make perfect duck and not to waste the money on unnecessary features. Yeah, but, I agree with that. Yeah, but the other reason is um, functionality. When you use this kind of box in, in, a, in your living room, you do not need the headphone output. When you use um, Vandla in a setup with OR, you do not need the headphone output because the headphone output has OR. Of course, yeah, yeah, makes sense. And how much uh, does it cost? It should 20k. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Uh, we make uh, expensive boxes, but I think reasonable prices for what what's inside. So the price is 2,795 uh, 2, euro, and I believe you uh, or USD. I believe there's a just price for the for the engineering goods uh, which is inside. Okay, Martin. Thank you very much for everything. It was a pleasure. As usual. So let's let's grab a beer. Sure, sure. Let's go. <laughs>
Hi guys, I just arrived at the Elium room. I'm, I'm here with Michael. Hi Michael, nice, nice to meet you. Very Bye nice to meet you. Uh, I see that you have a new amplifier. Yes, released. world premiere. Uh, yeah. It's a new M54R. It looks quite sci-fi to me. Well, <laughs> I mean, he's it's... continuing a lot of the, the family design yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. the heat waves and, and kind of the, the blocky design, but it is something sure, else. Sure. Uh, can I know more about it? Uh, power ratings, maybe? Yes. Uh, one thing, I mean, when you say it's sci-fi, it's because it almost looks like it's flying. That's so right. Yeah. We, we took some design cues from the old Amp 13R, the Bakun yeah, 13R, yeah, yeah. that was also looking like it was flying because it was placed on the power transformer. And it's the same thing here. So it's actually placed on the, the power, power transformer. transformer. Very cool design, I must say. It's, it's uh, if we talk about, let's say, a bit of a history, it's, it's of course the continuation of what we did with the old Bakun 51R, but now as Enlium 54R, 25% larger transformer. So uh, a lot more power or a little bit more Still about 100 watts. Okay. So, so 100 okay. watts in class, uh, sorry, 100 watts in, in 8 ohm. And then hopefully we're going to see if we're going to get it up to 204 ohms. Wow. But that's, that's not it. Okay, okay. Because we actually have two playing modes. So there's the full power. Okay. And then we also, which we're playing in now, is something called a high bias mode, which is kind of... Uh, it provides a lot more current in a way. It's, it's aching to class A, okay. so it's about 40, 45 watts at the moment in, in 8 ohms. But still you can drive uh, full range can, speakers, no problem. Um, no problem. Of course, mm -hmm. they have high sensitivity, the speakers we're playing on now. I think they are at 4 ohms, uh, about 92 dB as well. But, you know, with, with the full power, you have 100 to 200 watts, all depending right, on right. the, the It's a lot of power for, yes. for such a small size. So this is the high end. Yes, uh, it is. The top of the line. Top, top of the, the line. Of the uh, and, and also what is going to be quite interesting with it is, is that it's going to be modular. Oh, okay. okay. So, so we're going to have the opportunity to buy with two different models. So uh, either a phono stage, which is okay. going to be on the inside, or a DAC streamer, which is actually going to sit on the underneath the, the chassis at the very the back. DAC and streamer yes. at the same time. Yeah. Okay. And you can have both. So Super everything is, uh, is ready for that. And that streamer, it's working with an app? or Yes, so it's working with an app so as well. So working right now on an app? Yes, for this together one. With, with wonderful software programmers. Sounds like a mm. no, really cool. But I mean, again, to, to make the design that uh, we've done and, and Suin, our, our designer, is of course thinking out of the box. Sure. So uh, uh, you're going to see it when you, you look uh, much closer as well. Uh, not only is the, the transformer itself that it's standing on, you know, coming out of the chassis, even the capacitors are coming oh, out. I see them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay. so we have dual mono capacitors on each side and they're sticking out and it's just an amazing design. It's like a space you can It does, it does. <laughs> There's even a heat sink underneath that just, I mean, even you wonder why would you design a heat sink the way that he's done underneath, yeah, yes, yes. but it's beauty. I nothing is, yeah, nothing yeah. is left to chance. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, it does have some LEDs right here, right? Well, uh, again, thinking out of the box, there is light, but it's actually not coming from this floating display. The light sits at the very bottom of the chassis and lights down and illuminates these scores that are in there to show volume, to show what uh, okay. uh, uh, what input you, uh, selector yeah, yeah, you yeah. have. Yeah. And I mean, again, this is the prototype. And I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the holes now for the light are 0 0.3 millimeters. Okay. And we want to reduce that to, I believe, 0 0.15 millimeters, just to get it super, super sharp. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. The, yeah. Okay. Uh, when do you think uh, this unit will be you know, released? Um, we're hoping, uh, we, we've, we've said Q3, Q4, so Q3. let's say October, November is when we're, we're planning for it. And the price point for this The unit? price point is going to be uh, 25,000 euro, including VAT, $20,000 in the US. And then we are still calculating and seeing uh, for the modules. For the modules. So okay. we'll get back to you on that. And if anything, I mean, it's preliminary <coughs> because we're just at the finalization of production. Thank you very much, no, thank Michael, you so for much. everything. And uh, nice to meet you. And very nice to meet you, you as well. I'll see you next year. Yes, you are.
This is the new X2T from Rido. It uh, builds on the enormous success from the Hi-Fi show last year from the X1T. It has a tantalum coating on the base drive unit and it builds on the legendary tweeter from us, built in hand, in-house in Denmark. And now we have it in a floor standing version with an even more improved crossover and Nordos cabling inside. Um, the tweeter itself, we can have a look at it here. It is this. It's a ribbon tweeter, or what is called a planar magnetic tweeter, and it's a very heavy duty construction with neodymium magnets and a ventilated baffle on the back. And this builds on this foil. This foil is only 0.2 millimeters thick. There's, there's even a protective foil on this right now, so you cannot see how thin it actually is. But this is, has 50 times less mass than a normal uh, conventional soft dome tweeter, and that makes it extremely light, which gives very little distortion and coloration of the sound. So you, you feel like you have all the details in the world, but you have no listening fatigue. Amazing. So that's a, a very unique tweeter that we have invented. The bass drivers look like this. Also a very serious construction with a solid aluminum baffle. The motor system is a piece of art itself. Small magnets all the way around, but very powerful neodymium magnets in order to have it very ventilated. The titanium voice coil and also here ventilate on the back for less distortion. The uh, membrane itself is a aluminum cone with ceramic material and then tantalum material on top, a coating, a special coating that gives it extra stiffness together with the aluminum gives perfect damping. This makes for a drive unit that can keep up with the speed of the ribbon tweeter, which is very difficult to do. Uh, the crossover technology, this is not the crossover from this particular speaker, but it's built in exactly the same way. This, or Levler components at least, this is the uh, M-cap from uh, Mundorf. And uh, actually it's much more impressive on the back, because here you see point-to-point -point wiring, hardwired, and with Nordos cabling integrated in the crossover. Very unique. Amazing. Thank you. And this is, an, of course, a drive unit from the bigger series, the TD series, which is a, on another level completely. Of course, it sits also in the new TD6, which costs 210,000 euros a pair. And uh, this drive unit has even diamond coating on the top. Very expensive to do, of course, but gives maximum stiffness to the, to the cone and makes sure it's also lightweight and has the speed that we need. The motor system is completely new with neodymium, the strongest possible, the N52s, in a special turbine setup in a very open construction to make sure that all the sound waves that go backwards do not hit anything. This minimizes distortion. Very nice, very heavy drive unit. The X2Ts, X2Ts are 14,000 euros a pair. And uh, it's a world premiere on this uh, show here in Munich. And uh, it's very interesting to play them because when we play them, the, um, the reaction we guess, get the often is uh, is it the big one or the small one is playing? And people are very surprised that we actually play the small one, that two drive units of only five and a quarter inch size can actually fill a room of 65 square meters with bass. And it really can. Of course, it gets a little bit of help from our friends from Moon, but still, of course, the speaker is doing the job. The TD6 here, 
210.000 for a pair of speakers. Hey, Zach Merbach here at High End Munich uh, from Chicago, Illinois. So I came all the way out here for the High End Munich show. It's my first time. We were going to be here in uh, 2020, but then we actually ended up coming here for the first time in 2023. So I'm finally getting to try all the local fare and everything. But uh, yeah, this year we've had three new products in the last year. Um, and they start with uh, the atrium models. Here's the closed model atrium. And then over there is the atrium open. And so the atrium open came out first, and then we came up with the closed models, and those both have the atrium damping system, which is a system I created basically to kind of finitely tune headphones so that each headphone, I can really kind of like a painter's brush, choose exactly how it's gonna sound through the damping system in the back being between the driver and the backside of the headphone cup. So we're, I'm really proud of it, and it kind of helps me get the headphones tuned exactly how I want. And uh, we also implemented that system in with the uh, Caldera, which is our first planar magnetic headphone. And so it has both that same atrium damping system as well as the uh, Caldera magnet system, which the Caldera magnets, if you think about the uh, magnet being a flat panel, the magnets towards the driver are fluted so the air is spread out before it gets to the ear. And uh, yeah, we're planning on making more planar magnetic headphones as we go along. You know, and I really wanted to make sure that we made planners that sound unique. And a lot of people, and I agree that they sound kind of a mix between a dynamic and planar sound with that punch of a dynamic, with the kind of the treble extension and uh, speed of a planar magnetic headphone. And uh, yeah, as you can tell this year, we're uh, presenting with Felix Audio. You know, they make OTL amps and have their Envy headphone amp that pairs really well with our stuff. So, you know, the high impedance works with the dynamics and then the uh, speed of the, trans the uh, uh, cu uh, transformer couple design of the Envy is a big, uh, a big favorite. So yeah, high end Munich's been great. Everybody's been very nice. Getting to uh, see a lot of people I've never met before, which is really awesome. Uh, a lot of people whose names I've seen, but I'm typing in emails. And uh, so now I get to put a face to all these names and you know, your author here, Sandu, I got to meet him for the first time after talking back and forth, so. It's, it's just been a pleasure, and uh, yeah, hope to see you if you uh, come next time to High on Munich. Keep rocking. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Are you looking for a first-class listening experience? Then you're in good hands. ViaBlue stands for high quality, exclusive design and innovation. Here at High End, we show three of Cable's Offer 6 series. This is the SE6 Air speaker cable. We differentiate the different frequencies with air tubes. These are the according RCA and power cables. As you can see, we use very dense shieldings. High quality, exclusive design and innovation. This is Via Blue since more than 20 years. My name is Anke Pat and I'm in the management of our family run business, all handmade in Germany.
come stanotte una canzone tu che sei bella e tieni a voce d'ore canta per me stanotte e che se muore muria sentendo una bella canzone Canta me serenate mare nare, ma tu non canta, ma che pienza tu. Mare stanotte quanto a barca mare, ma tu non canta, ma che pienza. Oh, <laughs> 